Detroit is one of the most dangerous cities in the United States and has topped the list for the past five years. In response, the city has reorganized their police department under the direction of Chief James Craig and has seen measurable success. The murder rate dropped 14 percent from 2012 to 2013. What's a secret? Well, Chief Craig says he's seen that good citizens who are armed can deter violent crimes. Take a listen. But here was the key with Maine, one of the safest places in America. One of the safest places in America, and it's not like crime is non-existent. Certainly in Portland, Maine, they had gangs, they had narcotic suspects, they had shootings, uh, but clearly suspects knew that good Americans were armed. Joining me to discuss is Matthew Feeney, the assistant editor at Reason.com and Reason24. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what do you think about this? Do you, do you agree with them, having an armed citizenry? Can that really make a criminal think twice about doing a violent crime? Uh, I don't think it should be surprising that people um, who know that they are living in a neighborhood where people are armed are uh, perhaps a little more hesitant to commit a crime than one where people do not have arms. Uh, I mean, I obviously haven't, uh, you know, have the same experience as Craig does, but um, he was in Maine and now is in Detroit, and he seems to think that there's a difference. And it's, you know, he's someone definitely worth uh, listening to, considering that he is a police chief and, as you pointed out, a rather dangerous place. Right, and one thing he did say is that in Detroit that these criminals are starting to show up with body armor on. And they're mm -hmm. not wearing the body armor for the police. They already know the police are armed. They're wearing them because more citizens are being mm -hmm. armed. So, so what are your thoughts on that? Uh, again, not surprising. Yeah, yeah. Criminals are going to try and uh, anticipate uh, problems in their pursuits. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's important to stress, obviously, that you know, no, Craig is talking about legal gun owners. He's not saying that you know everyone should just have a gun, but he's you know people who uh, are able to legally purchase one. Uh, you know, most of whom you know that there are millions of guns in this country, and most people who own guns are not a danger to the public. Uh, and it's no different in Detroit. Yeah, I got to speak with his spokesperson on the phone, and he said mm -hmm. one thing that he really wanted to stress because he got a lot of press out of this conference mm -hmm. was that he's only talking about good responsible citizens having access right. to guns but uh, on top of this do you think that we still need regulations to ensure that only these responsible citizens are carrying guns I mean well you you can the the, the spectrum is very wide I mean if you look uh, globally there's obviously countries that have an incredibly incredible amount of uh, gun control and you know the uh, the other end of the spectrum is that there are no controls on whoever uh, owns weapons uh, but you know obviously uh, it's up to the Michigan uh, legislature legislators to come up with whatever the regulations are. I think it's worth pointing out that uh, you know, throughout uh, the world, even presently, there are examples of people using guns to you know, better their community. Uh, Mexico, for instance, uh, there were vigilantes who recently uh, kicked out you know, police officers who they thought were corrupt uh, in light of a lot of cartel violence. So no, there's um, plenty of stuff to look at globally. To make sure only responsible people are the ones who actually have the weapons. Right, which might not be the police in a lot of places in Mexico. Now one thing he did get some flack from is comparing Portland to Detroit. Mm. Obviously Portland is it's very hard to to compare because, for one, their socio-demographics are, are very different. Right. Portland is predominantly white. Detroit is predominantly black. Mm -hmm. So can we really say that because Portland is mm -hmm. a safer place because they have more gun owners? Can we really say that there's a direct correlation here with Detroit? Well, obviously, you know, the comparison is not perfect. Uh, but this is a problem that you're going to have in any policy talking about any issue. It's going to be the same whether it's guns or health care or education. People on both sides um, fall into the trap of, uh, you know, know, trying to draw false comparisons. But I think the, only, the reason why I think this one is particularly interesting is because a man who has worked in both cities is making the comparison. And, you know, I've never been uh, to Portland and was only in uh, you know, Detroit very briefly once. And I, you know, defer to uh, his thoughts on it, uh, having not looked at the raw data myself. Right. It's, it's difficult for a scientist or a researcher to do this, but someone who's actually been on the ground has a different perspective. And there was a Quinnipiac study that showed that states with restrictions on carrying of concealed weapons had higher gun related murder rates than other states. Mm -hmm. But the study's authors also pointed out that you can't conclude that concealed weapons uh, cause lower violence rates. Uh, do you know of any hard evidence that does? Uh, well, I mean, something I will say is that I uh, remember there, there was a great uh, publication on prohibitions generally that was published by the Institute of Economic Affairs. And, you know, as, as the accent might imply, you know, I'm not from a country that's uh, used to a wide range of gun ownership. But in, in the UK, which, you know, 100 years ago or so, you know, had, uh, you know, very relaxed gun laws, but, you know, handgun bans were instituted. And it, it might have an effect on the gun rate, but uh, this uh, study showed that, the, you know, it doesn't have 
that much an effect on the actual homicide rate. And you know, people should be concerned about whether people are being killed or not, not what weapon is used to kill them. Can we say anything on the opposite argument? We have about 30 seconds left. Is there any evidence that stricter gun laws lead to less violent crimes? Uh, well, but I, I want you know. I feel like it's worth reporting, returning again to the point I made earlier that you know you can point to you know whole countries are going to be completely uh, hard. It's going to be hard to draw any lessons from countries or jurisdictions because of um, the problem. But I do think it's worth uh, listening to Craig because of his experiences in both jurisdictions. Great, thank you so much. This is Matthew Feeney, the assistant editor at Reason.com.